Very good morning, students. For this lecturing video session, I am going to solve a problem from the unit 3 projections of solid. So, before I draw the projection, let me just read out the question and to make you understand and to extract as much as information which are given in the question. Draw the projection of a cylinder whose base 30 mm diameter and axis 40 mm long resting with a point of its base circle on VP such that the axis is making an angle of 30 degree with VP and parallel to HP. Let me just extract the information from here that is given data. So, the object name first the object the object is a cylinder here the object is a cylinder right of base diameter 30 mm of base diameter diameter can be specified with pi right so 30 mm and axis 40 mm long so either it can be given as altitude of 40 mm or height of 40 mm or length of 40 mm that means the axis length or length axis height or axis altitude right so the axis height so let me just mention in short form ah axis height as 40 mm right resting with one of a one of its base circle on vp so where it is resting and how it is resting it is resting on VP, how it is resting with one of a point, right, with one of a point. So, resting, resting on VP with a point, with a point, resting with a point of the base circle on VP, right, such that the axis is making at an angle of 30 degree with VP. So, the axis inclination, axis is inclined to VP at 30 degree. So, 30 degree inclination, got it? And parallel to HP, fine. So, this is the cylinder, eh? right? So, the top face and bottom face or simply base or bottom base of similar cross section of similar size and similar dimension right and these are generators these are generators so I, as i taught you in the introduction video uh, the cylinder does not have any edges or corners it is full of what the generators and it does not have any, any uh, corners, right. So, it is how it is resting with one of the point. So, with these are circumference points, these are full of circumferential point. So, here there is no confusion at all, anywhere you can just rest it because these are full of points, there is no corner or edges. So, absolutely there won't be any confusion by positioning it. But one thing you have to remember where to start the diagram, that means the two shape, the circle where you could see it, where the axis is perpendicular, that is axis is perpendicular to any one of the plane, whether it could be uh, perpendicular to VP or HP, where you see there you will get the, uh, the true shape. Here it is resting on VP, right and look at here, the axis is making 30 degree with the VP, by the way what do you mean by axis? an imaginary line joining the center of the top face and the bottom face, right, that is axis. Suppose axis, assume this is an axis, my finger is axis, if I tilt in this manner, this particular object is tilted with HP, right. If I keep in this manner, now the axis is making some inclination with VP. Right. So, what did I tell you? Where the axis is perpendicular, there you will see the true shape. If I make the object 
inclined with VP and the inclination becomes zero. Now it's resting on its base. Now the axis is making 90 degree with VP and parallel with HP. Therefore, you could see the true shape that is a circle cross uh, circular cross uh, section on VP. The cross section of circle will be seen on VP. Got it? So, we will have to start the diagram on BP. So, how, how it is positioned? It has been, this is what the final view. It is making some inclination that is 30 degree with VP. So, with this we cannot even uh, draw the true shape of the object. Therefore, the axis becomes perpendicular with VP. There you could see the cross, I mean the circular cross section, right. So, let me just start drawing it, the projections for which initially we have to draw the x y line, x y represents the reference line or ground line, above x y is vp, below is hp. There would be two stages, there would be two stages, the first stage would be symbol position or symbol resting symbol position or symbol resting. Stage 2 belongs to axis inclination or final position, axis inclination or the final position. Where to start the diagram? Where you will see the true shape. The true shape is obtained on the uh, VP, therefore I have to start the diagram on VP. So, here the diameter is given as 30 mm. So, diameter is given 30 mm. So, take radius in order to draw a full circle. Radius is equal to d by 2 which is 30 by 2 15 mm. So, do not take 30 mm as radius. If you draw so, total diameter becomes 60 mm. Right. So, take radius of 15 mm in your compass keeping it here, choose a center and draw a circle, draw a circle, right. The circle does not have any corner or edges, therefore, this is full of circumference points, right. So, in order to draw the projection, I am assuming, I am going to divide this circle into four equal divisions, four equal divisions. Let me just give the naming for this. This is A dash, this is B dash, this is C dash and D dash. The object is positioned in this manner, if the object is positioned in this manner, I have divided this into 4 A, B, C, D. It has the rear face also, which is have same size and shape. So, which I am going to consider P, Q, R, S, right. So, which would be invisible behind it. So, which I am going to capture within the bracket P, Q, R and S. Visible things needs to be uh, written in this manner without any bracket. Invisible points I have captured within the bracket. Now what about the uh, top view? You just project it vertically downwards, vertically downwards. And the projector should be perpendicular to XY line, right? I have projected. Now, what is the height of this object? Now I need to know the height. So the axis is nothing but the uh, line joining center of the top face and bottom face. So the height is 40 mm. Take 40 mm from the reference line, from the reference line, and cut it. So somewhere it cuts here. So so now I am going to close the boundary here going to close the boundary here, right, right. So now since it has been divided into 4, I need to just give the marking here that is the naming, right. Where is the axis? This is the intersection point is the axis. So you need to specify the axis because it does not have any yet just therefore axis needs to be shown here. Axis shown here. Now the marking, so for which you have to look at from the top, look at from the top. 
so this is how the object is in place a b c d p q r s yes, in this manner it has been specified so when you just look at from the top the a b c d comes here so this is how it is right a b c d are here p q r s here when you just look at from the top this will come below that means the front face a b c d will come below look at from the top i could see a d and c b is invisible so this becomes a this becomes d and this becomes c what about b b would be right behind d therefore it would be invisible so b should be captured within the bracket what about the rear side that is the rear base p yes and r are visible q is invisible because the point p q that is the rear side p q r s when you look out from the top these are the three points which are visible q would be invisible right so this becomes p this becomes s and this becomes r and q is within the bracket clear now let's move to the second stage where the axis is inclined where the axis is inclined at an angle of 30 degree axis is inclined 30 degree to vp right for which what i am going to do is axis you look at the here this side is parallel to the axis by tilting the the side axis will also tilted at the required angle so choose a point here choose a point and keep a protector in this manner now take 30 degree from here 30 degree take 30 degree and draw a line right 30 degree this this 30 degree with horizontal right now look at here this base is perpendicular to this side the base is perpendicular to this this resting point could be r look at here r is resting r is resting here so this is nothing but r1 since it is 90 degree with the base take 90 degree and draw a line right this should be 90 degree now measure the distance between p and r in our compass keeping at r cut an arc this becomes p1 now measure the distance between r and s from r cut an arc and this becomes s1 q1 within the brackets now measure the distance between p and a in our compass keeping at p cut an arc right cut an arc somewhere here. cut an arc before that this length i need to mark it so measure r to c r to c cut an arc this became c1 now measure the distance between c and a c and a keep it at c cut an arc so now connect the line connect this right this intersection is somewhere here this and opposite of c is a a1 now measure the distance between d and c keep it at c cut an arc this becomes d1 b1 now this is the axis right now the inclination should not be mentioned here because axis is inclined therefore you just extend this so now this is inclined at 30 degree this is inclined 30 degree got it so now use the hr hp pencil to draw as dark as possible for the object lines these are object lines so i'm just using to draw dark line now this particular image has been tilted at an angle of 30 degree what about the final front view for final front view you'll have to do that means the projection take projectors from each and every points so each and each and every points projectors draw vertical projectors 
from all the points. Then from the front view, the initial front view, oh, draw a horizontal line, draw a horizontal line. So now I got a box over here, within the box only the object is going to come, that is the final front view is going to projected within the box, the box shape is this much. Now what I have to do, I have to do the graphing work or mapping work, right? for which I need to see the intersection points, there is a horizontal projectors and vertical projectors will meet at one point, right? so look at here, A is here, where A is? A and A are getting intersected here. So, this becomes A1 dash. B, B and B are getting intersected here. So, this, this is B1 dash. C, C and C are getting intersected here. So, this becomes C1 dash. D, D and D are getting intersected here. This becomes D1 dash. Right? This front, there is a, this top base or top face has been pointed out. Now, what about the rear side or the bottom face? There is a PQRS, ah, that we will do it. P is here, P is here. So, this uh, intersection point, this becomes P1 dash. Q is here, Q is here, this becomes Q1 dash. R, R and R are getting intersected here, though, so this would be R1 dash. Yes, yes and yes are getting intersected, this becomes S1 dash. Right. So, what I, what I have told in the previous problem, the boundary should be closed, boundary should be closed, for which what I have to do? Where there is a circular cross section, there you should not use scale. Here the circular cross section, right, the object, so you have to use free hand. So, free hand for the uh, faces. So, here P to S. Let me just draw a thin line. Right, the boundary, right. So, boundary, I am just doing it. Now, connect this. The boundary should be always visible. So, therefore, you can just uh, draw as dark as possible. right boundary has been drawn next what i have to do i have to do the checklist to cross check it right so checklist that is top face top face is a to b b to c c to d and d to a and bottom or rear face or base p to q Q to R, R to S and P. Then the longer edges, it does not have edges, so it can be called as generators or this land height, so, right. So the generator height <coughs> that can be P to A, so in, if you want you can just mention because it does not have any edges, right, so these are full of generator for our convenience we have uh, divided it right so p to a and b to that is q to b right next c to r that is r to c next s to d you have to check this so when the object is been tilted in this manner right this is how the object is been tilted when you look at from the front, you could see the circular cross section as ellipse, as an ellipse. So, compressed view of the circular cross section, it would be visible. So, this front face is visible, therefore, you can just mark this dark line as dark. So, look at here A to B, B to C, C to D, and D to A has been drawn here. Let us move to the bottom face, bottom face, this is how the object is being tilted, right, this is been object being tilted. Now when you just look at here, these are the three points which are visible, 
R is invisible. So, R to Q is invisible. So, P to Q, Q to R, R to S and S to P. So, Q to R should be drawn as dotted line. That should be an arc form. Right? So, these are dotted lines I have covered. Then what about the other edges P A, Q A or whatever because it does not have any edges. Therefore, you need not to worry about it. So, with this I have completed if you want you just I mean draw the center line from the center to center. From the center to center if you want you just draw it from center to center. Look at here by this I have done the projections work right. So, projection has been done. Since it does not have any edges therefore, you need not to draw any line got it because as I told you these are generators these are generator it does not have any corner or edges got it fine. So, I have completed the projections right initially the simple position the axis was perpendicular to VP therefore, I could the see the true shape then I projected the top view then that particular angle uh, this object has been tilted at 30 degree with VP I have drawn this then I projected it to get the final front view I have obtained it. What is next dimensioning? So, dimensioning allow to mark the diameter of the circle diameter of the circle by using the leader line I am just going to mention. So, this is the leader line. So, you need to specify the boundaries. So, from where to where this diameter is and here you will have to mention dia 30 right. Next the axis height, the axis height can be mentioned in the top view and it should be above the dimension this is the dimension line of 40 mm 40 mm the angle that is inclination with VP the axis inclination which I covered right with this I have completed the projection what is next the note the right bottom of the diagram you have to write it all dimensions are in mm all dimensions are in mm the guideline should have height of 5 mm only if you want you can just mention the scale what you used if you have used any special scale in like reduced scale or uh, enlarged scale you can mention as whatever the scale you are considered here as such I have not changed the original dimension that is actual dimension therefore I could mention the scale as 1 is to 1. With this I have finished the diagram hope you have all understood how to do the projections for the cylinder. Thank you.